And this is taking place on Fight Island, something that a few months ago we all would have been scratching our heads like, oh, okay, what are we talking about? So for you as a UFC fan, the first time you heard Dana White say, okay, we're going to have Fight Island. I mean, what went through your mind? I, I, well, first thing went through my mind, I text Dana and I said, this is effing brilliant. I <laughs> love this idea because, you know, when you back up a little bit and something that obviously we've all been trying to manage and mitigate is, you know, dealing with this pandemic and the ebbs and flows of it. it seems like we, we get it under control then it comes back and it kicks us in the gut. There's just so much happening now globally, but now we'll take it back to the beginning of the year in that first quarter where we were all locked down and um, everything got put on hold. So I think, you know, I think the company and Dana, they pivoted brilliantly and this idea of Fight Island, I think it's interesting, it's fun for the fans and, um, and this idea that fighters are going to fly to Island at first and they're gonna get in a cage and they're gonna do what they were born to do, which is fight. I, I love the idea and you know, I told Dana, because he had, he, he was, uh, he sent me a nice gift, which was a, the uh, BMF title. And I said, look, you know, if I didn't like my jaw where I, where I have it right now, I would, I would go defend it myself and fight out. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I mean, we, we maybe could have had to call you because at one point this main event fell apart. Um, you know, Gilbert Burns was out and it seemed like Kamara Usman was off the card. And then the UFC was able to, to make this happen. They brought in Jorge Masvidal. It got done at the you know, 11th hour. They, they took flights over to um, Yaz Island, UFC Fight Island. And you know what, for you, does it say about the UFC that not only they were able to make this main event happen, but also for the fighters? I mean, Camaro and Jorge were like, yeah, let's do it. I'm going to fly around the world and do this on you know, just a couple of days' notice. The fight game in the UFC, there's some connective tissue to the world of professional wrestling. And one of those connective tissues is the show must always go on. And the number one thing you always want to take care of are the people who fill the seats, are the people who pay their hard-earned money. And in this case, it's, it's the fans who want to buy and watch this pay-per-view and put on a good show. And the fighters want to put on a good show. So in the spirit of the show must always go on, um, you know, for the UFC to create this Obviously, this fight island, uh, which has a tremendous amount of intrigue and fun and entertainment, but then also the B side to this, and quite frankly, the most important side is what are the fighters willing to do? And are the fighters willing to fly around the world, a place that they've never been before? I mean, these are all elements that, from a coaching standpoint, um, you know, th this goes against um, you know every fiber of a coach. Wait, I don't want to fly my fighter halfway around the world. We've never been there. We don't know what the environment's like. We're in the middle of a global pandemic. We're concerned about our families. There's so much pressure and angst and anxiety and noise that happens. So the B side to this, and again, the most important side is what the fighters are willing to do. So for these guys, for Usman and for Masvidal and everybody on the card, by the way, and I felt bad for Burns, uh, you know, getting racked with this. And I know he did too, but he's going to be back because he is who he is, right? Um, but, you know, for the fighters to be willing to do what they do, to do what they're doing now, is a, is, is a real testament to, uh, to these guys um, and the women too as well. So I take my hat off to them. And also, you know, there's, there's something, and this, this is one of the great things about the fighters. Now, whether this is in the forefront of their mind or it's somewhere in the recesses of their brain because they got a lot of other stuff to worry about, like the fight itself. It's the kind of stuff, when you do things like this, when Usman says, okay, the, the opponent who I've been fighting for, for, training for, for weeks, just dropped out. I feel bad about that. He had every right to say, I'm not going to do it. But instead he goes, I'm going to do it. I'm a champion. I'm a fighting champion. I'm going to defend this title. And then for Masvidal to say, I wasn't preparing for a fight, and I'm going to do it too. I'm going to fly around the world. I'm going to do this for my family. I'm going to do this for the fans. It's the kind of thing that just gains you that special equity with fans. Yeah. And it's, it's the kind of stuff that they just don't forget. And as a huge fan, um, I, I don't forget these things, you know, when fighters, when fighters step up this way and like, I'm going to do it. I'm yeah. And you, you mentioned Kamaru. I mean, this is a guy who is 11 and 0 in the UFC. He is the welterweight champion. I mean, he, he has a lot on the line here. Um, when you watch him fight, I mean, what impresses you the most about Kamaru? 
guy's a beast. He's an animal. Um, I've gotten to know him a little bit too uh, via text messages. You know, I've always been a big fan of him. And, and you know, he comes in, I, you know, and obviously he is, he's decorated. He comes from that world of amateur wrestling. And, you know, these guys are beasts, national champion, amateur, uh, all-American, by the way. So, um, you know, I think he, he comes in always great shape. He looks the part. He looks like a champion. Uh, so I always got nothing but great things to say about him. And, um, you know, his last couple of fights, especially his last fight, um, you know, where he, he was so precise and dominant where he needed to be, cool and calm in the pocket. So I can't wait. And, and you know, it's, it's no reason why he's undefeated. Yeah, I mean, there's no small task in front of him in Jorge Masvidal, although Masvidal is the underdog in this one. The last time I checked the odds, I think he was like a plus 235 underdog. I mean, looking at the matchup itself and knowing, and knowing Jorge so well, I mean, what do you feel like he needs to do to get this one done? Well, um, considering I have had uh, zero fights in the octagon, um, here's what... <laughs> here's what... Jorge Masvidal has to do. No, I think that while I haven't been in the octagon, I've been in some pretty big professional wrestling matches with a lot of, with a, with a big global eye on me. So I think what Masvidal has to do is quiet the noise around him. Because the moment, one of the things is quiet the noise around him because the moment he took this fight, I just you get thrust back into this spotlight and you get pulled in a thousand different directions and everyone turns to you and they, their, their energy turns to you for answers and they need answers and you have to decide and decide and decide and decide. Then you have to train and then you have to prepare. And he's probably, and you're just thinking 24 seven. I mean, you, all of a sudden your energy and everything goes just like this. I mean, and so I think he just has to quiet the noise, get over there. It's very hot over there also too. And as you know, these guys have to, you know, you have to quarantine for a couple of days and then they got to, cut they gotta try and make weight you know within a few hours and then they're fighting so i think that he's got to quiet the noise and just remember jorge masvidal needs to do exactly what he was born to do which is fight his ass off and if he does these things everything else is going to fall into place thank you for watching espn on youtube for live streaming sports and premium content subscribe to espn plus